I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Reading, uh, where I'm attached to a large project funded by the Arts and Humanities Research Council and the Sao Paulo Research Foundation. We're working with colleagues from the University of Reading and from the University, Federal University of San Carlos in Brazil. The project is called Towards an Intermedial History of Brazilian Cinema, Exploring Intermediality as a Historiographic Method, where we're looking at the whole history of Brazilian cinema from the silent period through until cinema from today, and looking at cinema in relation to the other arts. So cinema that uses, incorporates dance, theater, music, literature, poetry, and all other kinds of art forms and media forms. Um, and the cinema that I'm looking at in particular is films from the period of the 60s, late 60s, early 70s, associated with Tropicalia. So in the context of, of this series that gives a much greater picture of uh, films being made um, in dialogue, a part of Tropicalia, challenging Tropicalia, it's, the beyond part is, is quite significant in what Stefan has, has put together for us. Reticularia. Colares de quadriculos. Contas, cubículos, áreas, áreas, tramas, retramas, desarticularia de áreas reais. O rosto implode camaleo caleidoscópico. Brazilian cinema seems to be really vibrant and really um, fascinating in lots of ways in, in, uh, in terms of its politics, in terms of its aesthetics um, it, from the 60s through to today, but it's not as well known and I thought uh, this, is, this would be a great opportunity to, to learn more about that for myself but also to uh, share it with other people and to share some of the unknown films from Brazil. Everybody knows the same film, City of God, for example, but there is so much more than that, and it's a, it's a beautiful, dynamic history that's there. First of all, I'm very pleased to be here. They took a very special uh, expert, young man like this, to find me in Brazil because uh, I used to be kind of hidden from all the circumstances of repression and my style of work. So it was really a great pleasure to meet Stefan and uh, he was kind enough to invite me here with four of my trash films. The program that I've called, I've curated and I've called it Tropicalia and Beyond, Dialogues in Brazilian Film History where we're looking at some, maybe some more classical films from the period from the late 60s onwards, beginning with Glauber Rocha's Terem Transe, Land in Anguish or Entranced Earth. And then we're looking at those films and how, what's the legacy of those films? This, you know, the Glauber's film is 50 years old now. It's been celebrated lots of times this year in Brazil and elsewhere. But what does it mean for a film like that to be seen today? What's the, what's the relevance? What's the currency of it? And we're, we're screening films like this and seeing that, well, now they're, now they're just as relevant. Um, they speak to the political situation. They're still very radical in aesthetic terms. They're still difficult and they're demanding uh, of films to watch. In separate, maybe most of it on a small format, we use small cameras. Nowadays you have the digital cameras. Now, by that time, a small separate game is like a portable pistol. Because in Brazil, in those days, anything bigger than that, a 60 millimeter camera, if you go out in the street, you would immediately be confronted with a uh, bigger arm or gun from the repression. So it was a, a way of uh, registering these things. There's another thing that I praise very much, it's part of my work. Uh, I don't think it's a virtue. It's just a style. I never edit my films. They were edited in camera. 
But then we're also looking at some contemporary films from younger filmmakers and looking at how they respond to these older, older films or how they deal with the legacy of these films. And what, they, what, what younger filmmakers in Brazil are doing, doing today is equally as interesting. So I'm putting these, these two kinds of uh, films into dialogue with each other. Os filmes foram feitos nos anos 70 no loft da Lapa, né, um espaço libertário durante a, li a ditadura, em Super 8, que é um, um veículo uh, precário, né, que depois sofreu transfers, etc., do digital, etc., etc. Como é que pô, chega aqui em Londres em 2017, né? Devido, a, eu tenho que fazer menção a esse garoto, que é um garoto, o Stefan. Solomon, que é o curador da imagem, que foi lá, catucou, descobriu, descobriu a mil, no Hilton, descobriu. Fez, durante dois anos ele fez uma research, né, uma pesquisa lá, e que, porra, aí nos conhecemos e tal, e uh, me provocou a trazer. No, as, uh, quatro filmes meus. Yeah, and I'm learning so much about the, the struggles and the difficulties of everyone who lives in Brazil now uh, with the, the coup, with um, the problems of the Temer government. And I mean, some of this is, some of this is coming through in the way that um, the, the, the way that the Cinemateca, it's difficult for them to continue their work in the way that they do outside of the Tate. Um, we are holding a, a protest, a demonstration, uh, which is connected with the film Ore de Vela, The King of the Candle, uh, which is co-directed by Noelta Nunes and co-directed also by uh, Zé Celso, José Celso so Martínez Correa, uh, the head of Teatro Oficina. So we're showing this film, but beforehand we're going to be lighting candles out, out the front of the Tate to draw attention to the, to the problems uh, facing the Brazilian people today.